You're sitting in a math competition, palms sweating, when the judge calls out, What is the square root of 3,364? You have five seconds. The room falls silent. Your mind races. Most people would panic, fumble for a calculator, or make a wild guess. But what if I told you that with a simple trick? One that requires nothing more than basic multiplication tables you learned in elementary school. You could solve this in your head faster than most people could even pick up their phone. When faced with problems like finding the square root of 3,364, most people's brains immediately hit a wall. They know that 60 squared is 3,600. Too big. They might remember that 50 squared is 2,500. Too small. So they're somewhere in between, but how do you narrow it down further without tedious trial and error? The key to this entire method rests on a deceptively simple observation that most people have seen thousands of times but never truly noticed. Let's start by examining something you've known since childhood. The squares of single digits. Zero squared equals zero. One squared equals one. Two squared equals four. Three squared equals nine. Four squared equals 16. Five squared equals 25. Six squared equals 36. Seven squared equals 49. Eight squared equals 64. Nine squared equals 81. You've seen this table countless times, but here's what nobody taught you to notice. Look at the last digit of each square. Zero squared ends in zero. One squared and nine squared ends in one. Two squared and eight squared ends in four. Three squared and seven squared ends in nine. Four squared and six squared ends in six. Five squared ends in five. Now comes the revelation that changes everything. If a perfect square ends in zero, its square root must end in zero. If a perfect square ends in one, its square root could end in either one or nine. If a perfect square ends in 4, its square root could end in either 2 or 8. If a perfect square ends in 5, its square root must end in 5. If a perfect square ends in 6, its square root could end in either 4 or 6. If a perfect square ends in 9, its square root could end in either 3 or 7. Now that we've established the foundation, let's walk through the complete method using a concrete example. The square root of 1,225. Step 1. Analyze the last digit. Our number is 1,225. The last digit is 5. According to our pattern, if a perfect square ends in 5, its square root must also end in 5. This gives us immediately half of our answer. The last digit is 5. Step 2. Focus on the remaining digits. Now we cross out the last two digits, 25, and focus on what remains, 12. Step 3. Find the largest perfect square. We need to find the largest perfect square that is less than or equal to 12. Let's consider the possibilities. 1 squared equals 1, less than 12. 2 squared equals 4, less than 12. 3 squared equals 9, less than 12. 4 squared equals 16, greater than 12. So 3 squared equals 9 is the largest perfect square that doesn't exceed 12. This tells us that the first digit of our square root is 3. Step 4. Combine the results. We have 3 from step 3 and 5 from step 1. Therefore, the square root of 1,225 is 35. Let's verify. 35 squared equals 35 times 35 equals 1,225. Perfect. Notice what just happened. We didn't guess. We didn't use trial and error. We followed a systematic process that gave us the exact answer through logical deduction. This isn't luck. It's mathematical certainty. But the method becomes even more interesting when we encounter ambiguous cases. The square root of 729. Step 1. Analyze the last digit. Our number is 729. The last digit is 9. According to our pattern, the square root could end in either 3 or 7. We write down both possibilities, 3 and 7. Step 2. Focus on the remaining digits. Cross out the last two digits, 29, and focus on 7. Step 3. Find the largest perfect square. The largest perfect square that doesn't exceed 7 is 4, which equals 2 squared. So our first digit is 2. Step 4. We have two candidates. Our potential answers are 23 and 27. Step 5. The disambiguation test. To determine which answer is correct, we use a comparison test. Take the first digit we found, 2, and multiply it by the next consecutive integer, 3. 2 times 3 equals 6. Now compare this result, 6 with the remaining digits we crossed out in step 2, which was 7. The rule. If the remaining digits are less than our multiplication result, choose the smaller ending digit, 3. If the remaining digits are greater than our multiplication result, choose the larger ending digit, 7. Since 7 is greater than 6, 
we choose the larger ending digit, 7. Therefore, the square root of 729 is 27. Let's verify. 27 squared equals 27 times. 27 equals 729. Exactly right. You might wonder, why does this comparison test work? The answer lies in the structure of perfect squares and how they're distributed along the number line. When we have two potential square roots like 23 and 27, we're essentially asking, which of these squares would produce a number that starts with 7 when we remove the last two digits? 23 squared equals 529. Removing last two digits gives us 5. 27 squared equals 729. Removing last two digits gives us 7. The comparison test with 2 times 3 equals 6 is actually finding the boundary point between these two regions. Numbers starting with digits less than 6 would correspond to the smaller square root, 23 while numbers starting with digits greater than 6 correspond to the larger square root, 27. Let's tackle a more substantial example, the square root of 2916, to see how this method handles larger numbers. Step 1. Analyze the last digit. Our number is 2916. The last digit is 6. The square root could end in either 4 or 6. Step 2. Focus on the remaining digits. Cross out the last two digits, 16, and focus on 29. Step 3. Find the largest perfect square. What's the largest perfect square that doesn't exceed 29? 5 squared equals 25, less than 29. 6 squared equals 36, greater than 29. So 5 squared equals 25 is our answer, giving us 5 as the first digit. Step 4. We have two candidates. Our potential answers are 54 and 56. Step 5. The disambiguation test multiply the first digit, 5, by the next consecutive integer, 6. 5 times 6 equals 30. Compare this with our remaining digits, 29. Since 29 is less than 30, we choose the smaller ending digit, 4. Therefore, the square root of 2916 is 54. Verification. 54 squared equals 54 times. 54 equals 2916. Perfect. Now let's tackle something that would leave most people completely stumped. The square root of 5,876. Step 1. Analyze the last digit. Our number is 5,876. The last digit is 6. The square root could end in either 4 or 6. Step 2. Focus on the remaining digits. Cross out the last two digits, 76, and focus on 58. Step 3. Find the largest perfect square. What's the largest perfect square that doesn't exceed 58? 7 squared equals 49, less than 58. 8 squared equals 64, greater than 58. So 7 squared equals 49 is our answer, giving us 7 as the first digit. Step 4. We have two candidates. Our potential answers are 74 and 76. Step 5. The disambiguation test multiply the first digit, 7, by the next consecutive integer, 8. 7 times 8 equals 56. Compare this with our remaining digits, 58. Since 58 is greater than 56, we choose the larger ending digit, 6. Therefore, the square root of 5,876 is 76. Verification. 76 squared equals 76 times 76 equals 5,876. Absolutely correct. The beauty of this system is that it scales seamlessly to even larger numbers. For six-digit perfect squares, which have three-digit square roots, the process remains fundamentally the same. Step 1. Identify possible last digits based on the final digit of the perfect square. Step 2. Cross out the last two digits. Step 3. Find the largest perfect square that doesn't exceed the remaining digits. Step 4. Use the disambiguation test when necessary. The only difference is that Step 3 now involves finding two-digit numbers whose squares fit our criteria, but the logical structure remains identical. From a psychological perspective, this method succeeds because it transforms a complex calculation into a series of simple pattern recognition tasks. Instead of trying to hold multiple approximations in working memory while performing mental arithmetic, you're following a clear, step-by-step -step algorithm. The method also provides immediate feedback and verification at each step, reducing cognitive load and increasing confidence. When you see that 3 squared equals 9 is indeed the largest perfect square less than 12, you know you're on the right track. To become truly fluent with this technique, focus on internalizing these key elements. 1. The last digit patterns. Memorize which ending digits correspond to which possible square root endings. 2. Perfect squares, up to 144. 
Know the perfect squares of 1 through 12 instantly. These are the building blocks of the entire method. 3. The disambiguation rule. Practice the multiplication comparison test until it becomes automatic. Fourth, pattern recognition. Train yourself to quickly identify the remaining digits after crossing out the last two digits. Now let's return to our original challenge. Finding the square root of 3,364 in five seconds, let's apply our method. Step one, last digit is four, so our answer ends in either two or eight. Step two, cross out 64, leaving us with 33. Step three, largest perfect square, less than or equal to 33, is 25 equals 5 squared, so first digit is 5. Step 4, candidates are 52 and 58. Step 5, 5 times 6 equals 30. Since 33 is greater than 30, we choose 8. Answer, 58. From start to finish, under 5 seconds, entirely in your head, with complete confidence in the result. The weird math of calculating square roots in seconds isn't really weird at all. It's the natural result of understanding and exploiting the hidden patterns that exist within our number system. What seems like magic is actually the inevitable outcome of mathematical logic, dressed up in an elegant procedural form.